Today we'll discuss about the bleaching discolored tooth. So the cosmetic dentistry has become an integral part of the restorative dental practice and the teeth are considered the most important feature of an attractive face. It is generally perceived that the whiter teeth enhance the beauty of a person's smile. So that's how the result of the demand for whiter and the brighter teeth is increasing among the today's patients. So coming to the etiology of the tooth discoloration, the tooth discoloration refers to any change in the color or translucency of a tooth due to the extrinsic or the intrinsic factors. The extrinsic factors may include the external deposits on the tooth surface that may be derived from the highly colored foods or drinks, maybe either due to the intake of the coffee, tea, sugar with the carrot juice or the oranges. But all this stain the tooth and the intrinsic discoloration occurs because of the stains incorporated within the tooth structure due to various reasons such as the intrapalpal hemorrhage or the pulp necrosis or the pulpal tissue remnants after the endodontic treatment or the calcific metamorphosis or the incomplete removal of the obturating material and the sealer cements from the pulp chamber or with the aging or the dental caries. And also it may result from the tetracycline stains uh, uh, due to the ingestion of the tetracyclines in the utero by the mother or up to 7 to 8 years by the child which may lead to the incorporation of the tetracyclines into the dentine which during the tooth calcifications. They may be of various degrees uh, from uh, varying from the light yellow to very intense gray stains with the horizontal banding especially in the cervical region. Next we will see the fluorosis. This may occur due to the excessive ingestion of the fluoride during the tooth development and may cause the defects in the ameloblast and improper calcification of the teeth. Here the fluorosis discoloration can range from the white opaque spots to the dark brown patchy discoloration and the severe fluorosis may also even cause the pitting and disfigurement of the enamel. Next is the blood discreases at the porphyra amelogenesis imperfecta that is the genetic condition causing the malformation of the enamel resulting in the yellow or the brown discoloration of the tooth. And the dentinogenesis imperfecta may cause the brownish or the yellowish or the grayish discoloration of the teeth due to the defective formation of the dentin. So, the lightening of this discoloration through the application of the chemical agents to oxidize the organic pigmentation in the tooth. For all this, we need the bleaching agents in the dentistry, namely the hydrogen peroxide, sodium perborate and the carbamide peroxide. If you see hydrogen peroxide, it is commonly used bleaching agent in the dentistry at a concentration of 30% known as superoxo. And it is used for in-office bleaching procedures, but at this concentration, it is cost and it may cause soft tissue burns in case of the accidental contact. So, what is the mechanism of the bleaching is that here the low molecular weight of hydrogen peroxide allows it uh, to easily diffuse through the enamel and dentin. Here, it breaks down into water and releases the perhydroxyl ions and the nascent oxygen. The great oxidative power of the perhydroxyl and the nascent oxygen breaks up the large macromolecular stains into the smaller stains molecules. This reflects the less light and makes the tooth appear lighter. The free oxygen opens the carbon ring of pigment molecules converting them into the colorless hydroxyl compounds that are lighter in color. The bleaching action of hydrogen peroxide is accelerated by heat, light or combination with the sodium perborate. Next we will see about the, the sodium perborate. This is an oxidizing agent which is available as a white powder and it is stable when dry but in the presence of the acid or water it decomposes into sodium metaborate. And this is the material of choice for the most intracoronal bleaching procedures. Next, we will see the carbamide peroxide. This is an inorganic, or sorry, this is an organic white crystalline compound powder composed of the urea and the hydrogen peroxide. It is in the used in the concentration of 10% to 35% supplied by 
as a gel by adding the thickening agents like carbonoglycerin or the glycol and coming to the classification of the bleaching procedures we have the non vital intracoronal bleaching in that we have the in office thermocatalytic bleaching or the walking bleach and next is the vital extracoronal bleaching in that we have this in office thermocatalytic bleaching in office flower bleaching in office bleaching for the fluorosed teeth and at home vital bleaching so in the non vital bleaching the careful case selection is very important for aesthetic results so the non vital bleaching is suitable for the intact anterior teeth that have discolored due to the intrapalpal hemorrhage or the pulp necrosis so here the thorough cleaning and polishing of the tooth to check the degree of discoloration is done and shade selection is also be done and refining the access cavity to remove the any palpal remnants or obturating material and the root filling should be removed up to 2 mm below the cej using the gates clidental and a suitable base consisting of the gic cement should be placed to a thickness of 2 mm to to serve as a barrier this this prevents the bleaching agent from the pulp chamber into the apical region as well as into the dentinal tubules and this is the preliminary pr procedure for any bleaching procedures for the intracoronal bleaching if you see the techniques we have the walking bleach technique and the in office thermocatalytic bleach technique The term walking bleach is proposed by the Spasser and modified by the Nutting and Po described that bleaching action in the non-vital teeth that occurs between the patient visits. The reason it's known as a walking bleach. Initially, this procedure uses the mixture of sodium perborate and 30% hydrogen peroxide that is the superoxol has a bleaching agent. But due to its caustic effects of a hydrogen peroxide the presently the sodium perborate is mixed with a 3% of the hydrogen peroxide so after the preliminary procedure the bleaching action is occurring over the next 3 to 5 days out of the office here the bleaching agent should be placed into the intracoronal area so that the bleaching action occurs even outside the offers and the bleaching effect is visible after the one or two visits next you will see the in office thermocatalytic technique see after the preliminary steps protect the labial and the lingual gingiva by using the petroleum jelly and the heavy gauze rubber dam is used to isolate the teeth so that it fits tightly at the cervical margin and prevents the leakage of the bleaching agents onto the gingiva and irrigate and clean the dry axis cavity and place the cotton pellet in the chamber and cover the labial surface with a few strands of the cotton to serve as a matrix for the bleaching agent and introduce the freshly prepared superoxol into the axis cavity and on the labial surface drop by drop by the syringe and activate the solution by applying the heat using the heated instrument like ball burnisher or the commercial heat applicators like touch and heat spreader The temperature should not be greater than 10 degrees above the body temperature and the heat accelerates the bleaching efficiency of the hydrogen peroxide. And periodically replenish the bleaching solution and replace the cotton matrix and repeat the procedure for 4 to 6 times with the breaks in between. So this procedure should be taking for about for not two more two months so to have an effective action now we will see the vital bleaching technique so for this also the proper case selection is a key factor in successful vital bleaching this is because not all the stains are amenable to the bleaching so this is indicated in case of the extrinsic stains due to the food beverages tobacco etc which can be removed by polishing alone and in case also of the mild to moderate tetracycline and the dental fluorosis stains here the preliminary preparation is done consisting of the thorough oral prophylaxis to remove the stains in the plaque and the deposits and the 
gingiva around the teeth is protected labially and palatally with a coating of the vaseline or the petroleum jelly and the heavy gauze rubber dam is used to isolate the individual teeth and secure cervically with a dental floss and if you see the gauze is saturated with a super oxal solution and applied drop by drop from a syringe taking care not to spill the solution and a special bleaching lamp is placed 2 feet from the patient's face and left there for 20 to 30 minutes and the light and heat from the lamp accelerates the release of the nascent oxygen from the superoxal thus producing the bleaching effect hence this method is known as a thermocatalytic bleaching and the superoxal must be periodically replenished the procedure is repeated several times till the desired color is observed Now we'll see the in-office power bleaching. In this power bleaching refers to the accelerated version of the in-office vital bleaching where the release of the nascent oxygen from the concentrated hydrogen peroxide is rapidly enhanced by the exposure of the powerful light source such as the laser or the xenon lamp arc lamps. Here the anterior teeth are exposed to the laser light or the plasma arc lamp for the specified time. and the arch, when the arch is complete the procedure is repeated if required and the gel is left in contact with the teeth for additional 5 minutes after which is removed with the wet gauze and teeth are cleaned with the cupious water this re- procedure is repeated for two or three visits until the desirable result is achieved now we'll see the in office vital bleaching for fluorosed teeth Bleaching fluorosed teeth has been traditionally performed using the Meckin solution. That is the five parts of 36% hydrochloric acid that etches the enamel and the five parts of the 30% hydrogen peroxide 1 ml bleaches the enamel and one part of the anesthetic ether 0.2 ml lowers the surface tension of the solution and removes the stains and debris allows the deeper penetration of the bleaching agent. The solution is freshly prepared before use in the clean tapen dish. And the preliminary steps are same as a thermocatalytic bleaching and the solution is applied onto the tooth surface using the cotton applicator. And it is left on the tooth for 1 minute following by the polishing the enamel surface using the sandpaper disc. This procedure is repeated for 5 minutes finally the tooth is rinsed and neutralized using the sodium bicarbonate. And now we have the modified mekin solution which employs the same combination with the 20% hydrogen sodium hydroxide and substituted for 30% of hydrogen peroxide here the sodium hydroxide is alkaline and causes the less removal of the enamel surface so that's how the in office vital bleaching is done for the fluorosed teeth and if you see at home vital bleaching or the night guard vital bleaching technique At present this is become the most popular vital bleaching technique and it is relatively simple and safe and easy here the carbamate peroxide is the agent of choice here for this the oral prophylaxis is must to remove any surface stains and uh, this night guard for the night guard vital bleaching we have to prepare the night gu- night guards uh, using the clear plastic sheets of ethyl vinyl acetate and This procedure includes that the at night after routine tooth brushing the patient is instructed to place a small amount of bleaching agent into the tray to cover the facial surface of the teeth to be bleached and the patient should wear the tray over the teeth to be bleached and excess bleaching gel near the gingival should be wiped off and the bleaching action occurs overnight while the patient is asleep The mild bleaching action of the carbamide peroxide is enhanced by prolonged contact of the gel with the patient's teeth. And in the morning the tray is removed and cleaned and stored dry while the patient is can carry on with the normal activities. This procedure is required for about a few weeks for about 2 to 6 weeks for about mild to moderate stains. Now we'll see the Another procedure known as a microabrasion. It is a process in which the tooth surface is abraded by the combination of an acid and an abrasive. And it is a conservative means to remove the superficial stains. 
Here the agent used is the 18% hydrochloric acid mixed with the pumice to form the thick paste. And the commercially available product known as the Prema compound is available which contains 11% hydrochloric acid with the silicon carbide gel. Here, using the rotary rubber cap, a stiff brittle brush is run at slow speed and the acid paste is applied with a firm pressure on the label surface of the affected tooth for about 20 to 30 seconds. This separates the teeth and removes the superficial stains and this procedure is re repeated for about few times until the stains are removed. Now we'll see the macro abrasion. The another technique that requires are employed to remove the stains in enamel is macro abrasion. This involves abrading the enamel surface using the fine diamond or the carpet finishing bar. The care is taken to remove the 20 to 30 microns of the superficial enamel stains. So, the presently the bleaching offers a viable option to conservatively manage the discoloration of the teeth. However, not all the discolorations are amenable to the bleaching and the bleaching techniques recommended today are safe and efficient without the hazards of the caustic agents like 30% H2O2. So, when used in conjunction with the composite or the ceramic veneers, bleaching offers a simple and safe means to successfully brighten the discolored tooth. So, this is the brief about the bleaching of the discolored teeth.